the warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the thrift of warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, Big Square Road to Come With your morning horn of Z's, your sip of chaga coffee Oh my goodness I'm like sitting here watching all this shit happen Going, oh, I, I've been screaming about this for 20 years I didn't know why I was screaming in the beginning. I figured that out kind of 2010-ish, that it was going to be so big that you have to have your assets in your own possession. Nothing else would survive this. Um, and it caught on. A lot of people saying the same thing now. If you have any third-party assets held by anybody, it's, uh, I don't think it's likely to make it through the crash. Why? Because all those third-party assets that hold your assets have problems themselves. For example, offshore uh, warehousing of gold and silver. You don't think the guards of those vaults are going to walk away with your silver? Of course they will. They have families to take care of too. You don't think big governments are going to go after the big stores of gold and silver? Of course they will. Their people are hurting. Um, <clears throat> really interesting statement by the UN the UN demands all central banks stop rate hikes and switch to price controls instead. Yes, that might seem absurd that the UN is telling everybody how to run their economic system, but a bigger absurdity is that the central banks are involved in, in controlling and have been controlling our monetary system. You, the minute you put people in charge of money is the minute you, you've signed the death warrant for any kind of money. We need to get governments out of the money business because governments are people very corruptible very cruel very evil governments are the problem not the solution and the un says we need to get the central banks out and switch to price controls are you kidding socialism has never worked ever 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 i love this how do you sum up socialism the problems with socialism, the main problem with socialism is that it will destroy your economic future and your children's future. It creates an unjust society where a small political elite enriches itself by imposing a regime of equality of poverty and misery on most everybody else. Equality of po poverty and misery. That is so anti-human. Against the, It is against the very essence of your soul. Your soul came down here to live whatever kind of life that you set up for yourself. And it, it's that process, it's that journey that's the important part. Not that you get what you, you came down here to get. It's the process, it's the learning, it's the striving for excellence. It's the ability to fail and be destroyed, Mr. Banker. You should have been destroyed in 2008. You should have been destroyed many times. Central banking isn't a sin I think it's it, it is a it's a soul sin. People should not be put in charge of money if money's going to be a big deal. And right now, money's still a big deal. We haven't evolved enough to have money go away. We will one day. We need to get the basics. We need like replicators to create the basics for society. Until then, it it is a it is a game board that is completely open to you to be what you want to be, how you want to be it, unless government gets in the way. And that's exactly what the UN is suggesting, that the government get in the way. Modern monetary theory, whatever, whatever you want to call it, pain is part of life. You learn more from pain than, you learn more from your losses than your victories. And that's why we're here, to overcome the difficulties. The socialist welfare state also harms the poor by destroying their work incentives, crowding out private charities and causing family breakups where fathers are replaced by government checks and it destroys personal freedoms by using governmental force in pursuit of equality. And that's just for starters. We cannot let this happen. We won't let it happen. The United States is founded. Capitalism, I think, would be great. We've never tried it. We've never tried capitalism on the planet. True capitalism where if you lose, you lose. If you fail, you fail. There's no, there's no bailouts of anybody ever. You, it might sound mean and cruel. It's the exact opposite thing. The mean and cruel thing is making everybody live up to a low standard. Our souls were not built that way. We didn't come down here for that, in my opinion. 
Anyway, um, if you've been on the road to Ruta, it's been a long road. 20 years of doing this, 22 years now. Um, I was writing for GATA in the early days when I found out that gold and silver were manipulated in the around 2000. That's when I first published a letter. I, I didn't even sign my name. I, I signed it a concerned citizen. And then um, Jim Sinclair actually posted it on his uh, website. And I was like, wow, Jim Sinclair put my writings up there. I And I was talking to Bill Murphy all the time, writing articles for him under a pseudonym. And then I said, fuck that. You got to be out in the open and you can't go half-ass. So I came out as Big Swear. Um, interesting, interesting time. So we are about to go through exactly what Ruta wrote in the sand Originally, you print as much money as possible, soaking up all the benefits, build your houses, your roads, your bridges, and then ultimately destroy everything and go back to a gold and silver standard. The U.S. Mint has been working on that, and now we're at that final stage of it. Um, the final stage is that the U.S. Mint knows how valuable gold and silver is, especially gold and silver minted by the U.S. Mint. The U.S. Mint doesn't give a shit about the Federal Reserve. The U.S. Mint is America's money. The Federal Reserve is the banker's money. Keep that in mind. Um, so the U.S. Mint, in all its glory, how many times do they tout how great I am? As a matter of fact, I have a letter from Ventress Gibson I just got about a month ago stating, We appreciate your continued patience as we work to increase numismatic production amid unprecedented demand for coins. Staffing shortages during the global pandemic and supply chain issues. Staffing shortages are over by the way. And this is the, the line that got me. They, first of all, she says how great the, the employees are. I do believe they are great. I believe they're being handcuffed. But she said, and I quote, this year, meaning 2022, we significantly increased production quantities of our most popular coins, the American Eagle one ounce silver dollar, which will lead to broader availability to our customers. They significantly increased. Their capacity was about 60 million coins per year. 60 million coins per year. They were right on that in January. Here's the numbers from the Mint. Right here, January. They, they made 5 million coins. Now, granted, they take December off for some reason. Nobody knows why. And part of November off started a while ago. I heard they're going to take October off. I mean, that talk about a, a, a criminal enterprise. But look how many coins they made. And remember this letter, Ventress Gibson, the director of the U.S. Mint, an HR professional who's never run a mint in her life. 5 million, 1.5 million, 1 million, 850,000. Keep that number in mind, 850,000. Remember, they can do 5 million coins a day. I mean, a year. 5 million silver eagles a year. And then... 1.3 million, 9 .2, or 925,000, 850,000, 850,000. And this month, or last month, 833,000. I think they did 850 because that's the number they set. They just haven't updated it. We'll find out very soon. And then they're going to cut it off? And it's just a rumor so far. I, I, I've been asking around, saying, does anybody have official notification that the U.S. Mint is going to cut off Silver Eagle production? And they'll say, oh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's our typical end of the year thing. No, it used to be half of December because what do they really have to do when they change from one year to the next? They just got to change the dies and the little stickers you put on a green box. They're not changing anything else. Anything. Why do they have to take the entire month of December off and then November off? And now, what are they going to do? October? What do these people do while they take this money off? I, dies can be changed in, what, 30 seconds? This is a fraud, and it is criminal. I'm not going to say it should be criminal. It is criminal. They are required by law to create quantities of silver eagles, not gold, silver eagles in quantities to meet demand. Period. Exclamation point. I heard one... <laughs> one gold guy and, and coin guy who should know better say, oh, no, the, the U.S. is by law required to pay fair market value for the silver and the Sunshine Mint won't sell in bars for fair market value. That is so fucking wrong. That is just wrong. The reason it's wrong, even on <laughs> go to the Mint website and watch their videos. They don't buy blanks. They buy Comex bars. 
and LBMA bars. They buy the 1,000-ounce bars. That's what they pay, and they pay fair market value for them. That's where they get their silver, and then they have them processed. And the process of making them is under the law. In the law, it says they can only they can't charge a premium on these bars on the coins they can only recoup the cost of making the coin so they have to buy the silver at wholesale prices absolutely and they do they get them in thousand ounce bars i mean anybody in silver should know this by now and then it goes to the sunshine mint or the perth mint i heard was doing it to yeah, i like the sunshine mint the perth mint's a crime syndicate John Adams does a great job exposing that. Sunshine Mint, they're okay, but hey, make the bars. The U.S. should be paying more than every other mint in the world, which that that is required by law. The processing of the silver requires the U.S. to pay whatever it takes to get the blanks. And then they, they stamp the blanks. So I hope this is clear to everybody. And I want anybody who hears different to tell whoever's spouting the bullshit that we have to pay more than spot price for our silver, we don't. We buy spot on, the U.S. Mint buys the spot on the COMEX or the LBMA. And that's required by law. And that's on, it's on the U.S. Mint website. Just look at how they make gold and silver bars. They buy COMEX bars and then they process them and pay whatever fee it takes. Let's not get confused here. The U.S. Mint is breaking the law. Not only that, they're they're making 850,000 silver eagles a month. When the capacity is 5 million a month. Now, here's a possibility. It is possibly, it's a possibility that they're actually making 5 million a month. They're just not selling them to the public. They're stockpiling them. As a matter of fact, flip over the new Silver Eagle, and that's exactly what that is symbolic of. The new Silver Eagle shows an eagle, as, as uh, David Ryder, the head of the mint before Vitrus Gibson came in, shows an, an eagle landing adding a branch, an oak branch, to the nest. That's the new, that was so important. We have a a new silver eagle, and David Ryder said it. Watch the videos from the U.S. Mint, and you'll get get an understanding of what's going on. David Ryder's like, the the eagle is flying with an oak branch as if adding to the nest. What does that mean? Is the U.S. Mint creating 5 million silver eagles per year but they're just stockpiling them, getting ready for the new uh, monetary system. It is absolutely what the Fed Boston, uh, the picture of a little girl cashing in 19 gold coins at a bank in their Banking Basics uh, pamphlet. And that was published the very same day, the very same day as all the Road to Ruta documents. January 1st, yes, I was there. I was at the Fed Boston website on January 1st. They were even closed that day. And I was in that section that section when that thing was posted. And I'm like, and it had two, the, the Road to Ruta, Wishes and Rainbows comic book and the teacher's guide had big red exclamation points in front of them. I'm not making this up. After I was screaming, look at this, look at this, look at this. After about three months, they took the red exclamation points away. But there, there were three documents posted, Wishes and Rainbows comic book, the Road to Ruta teacher's guide and Banking Basics was redone from, uh, that was originally posted in 1987. The same year the, the Silver Eagle Act was, or the, the Gold and Silver Eagle Act was, was passed. This is all part of the game. It transfers over. That's what Ruta wrote in the sand, exactly what she's talking about when she says we have to get back to a gold standard because of the scarcity issues, because of all kinds of stuff. And we have massive amounts of gold, by the way. Not, there's not 200,000 tons of gold like Jeffrey Christian will tell you. If you believe that, idiot, good on you. Good luck with that. There's millions of tons of gold. My guess is two to three million, which is what, 30 times what they tell us. And there's less silver than you can even imagine. That's why silver is trading at, what is it now? It's uh, 40% of its all-time highs. It's just insane to think about where gold is over 200%. Silver is 40%. Why? Because they're trying to fake you out. They're trying to tell you, oh, yeah, gold is valuable, but silver's not. Don't even look at silver. Heaven forbid you look at silver. So I think as of December 30th, uh, everybody in the silver rigging game was told, you're standing down now. And they were told this years ago. 
Look at the commitment of traders. Look at silver commitment of traders has gone down to the total open interest has gone down to just under 130,000 contracts. That's crazy. Look, it was up at 200,000 contracts just the beginning of last year. It's going away, and, the, and we can't find any silver. The U.S. Mint can't even make silver eagles, supposedly. Why is open interest going to zero? Here it is again. Look where it was a year and a half ago. Look at it drop. That's in green. It's going to zero. Why? Because the COMEX is a fraudulent exchange. What about the LBMA? Pure fraud. Look, they claim they're trading 250 million ounces transferring every single day. And the JP Morgan guy who was in charge of this, who ran the, the LBMA stocks way back when, uh, his name's something Smith, David Smith or something like that, said these numbers are net numbers, so the actual numbers three times this. They're claiming to trade 100% of uh, silver mine production every transfer every day on the LBMA. Remember, the LBMA is not an exchange. It's a ridiculous closed loop system. There is no free trading in that. I hope everybody understands how important this fact is that the U.S. Mint is not is not producing coins to meet demand, but they're expanding capacity. How is that possible? The capacity was 60 million, 60 million ounces a year, and they've expanded that. Maybe it's 100 million ounces a year now, but look at the production volumes. We all know there's $10, $12, $15 dollar premiums on Silver Eagles and on pre-65 coinage, by the way. I do have a, a, an idea that I'll talk about, too, on the private road about silver. Um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. So I'll, I'll talk about that uh, in the coming probably, uh, probably this week on the private road. road, road. All right, uh, and cryptos. Absolutely. When you have shit like this going on, the UN demands banks stop rate, hi uh, right rate hikes and switch to price controls. Clearly, we need decentralized money. Gold and silver are decentralized money for the most part. Cryptocurrencies are decentralized money. In a world of decentralized money, the cream rises to the top. You don't have a government saying, you don't have Gary Gensler saying, you can, you can do this with this. And you, can, Oh, Kim Kardashian, go to jail. Martha Stewart, go to jail. <clears throat> Meanwhile, all the criminal bankers don't go anywhere. Gary Gensler, the, the, the fine on Kim Kardashian was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The most ridiculous. And, oh, by the way, and, and for what? A, a post, a tweet, or whatever she did? Why not go after the real criminals, Gary Gensler, like yourself, by the way? Or like your banker friends? Go after the real criminals. It's just shocking that, that they did this to Kim Kardashian, who was like this much knowledge of cryptos. And Gary Gensler is pulling this obscure rule for securities. Basically, I, I don't know what happened to the coin, the Ethereum Max or whatever it is. He's saying it's a security so we can bust Kim Kardashian. Because that's the only reason they, they can bust her. So anybody who, is, who has touted cryptocurrencies and got paid for it, look out for Gary Gensler. He's coming for you. Big time. And there's a lot. Absolutely. And because Gary Gensler says everything in crypto is a security and he's the law. So he gets to, to throw down, you know, you have to, he, they don't go to, they don't go to trial because the trial for Kim Kardashian would be destructive. I mean, all she, all she, her whole life is about her name and the way she looks. That's what she does for a living. If you drag her name through the mud through a long court battle that, you know, she made $250,000 and then they fine her a million to? That's extortion by government. It's like Reggie Middleton. There's still, coin market cap it has to be one of the most ridiculously criminal places I've ever seen because look at Veritasium. They have this red warning. The Securities and Exchange Commission has filed charges against Reggie Middleton. It used to say, found Reggie Middleton guilty of fraud. It's bullshit. 
There are so many crypto coins that the SEC has pounded on. And yet only Reggie Middleton has this one. Why? Because Reggie Middleton invented a way to get rid of the commercial exchanges and the commercial banks, the middlemen in transaction. That's where the money's made. Gary Gensler said it himself. And the post I posted yesterday when he was teaching over at MIT, teaching cryptos, he said, hey, you got to cut in the bankers or they're going to cut you out. They're gonna, they, they try to slow this stuff down. The most I know bankers. I know bankers. There's 20 of them that work together. He's just like yelling to the world that there's a, a huge conspiracy with the bankers to stop and destroy anything that helps humanity in the banking world. This has got to end. Yes, Veritasium's up. It should be up. Veritasium will go higher than Bitcoin. Absolutely. But it will take a world without Gary Gensler in it. Because Gary Gensler is going to defend the bank and the, the criminal exchanges to the very end. Here's an interesting thing I was reading. OPEX taking on the Fed and Goldman's buying every bail, barrel it can find. You know, they talk about OPEC. You know, they're cutting production. Yeah. OPEC, the Saudi admin, admin, uh, administration, whatever his name is, the Saudi guy in charge of their oil came out and said it. This is all futures and options bullshit. We're going to cut oil prices to get find the fair market value of oil. It's amazing that the, the Saudi Arabian government has to tell the United States what constitutes a free trading system. And again, UN demands all central banks stop rate hikes. It's going to get weirder than this. Just wait. That's why you have to have your metal in your own possession. Please get your cryptos in your own possession. Everything else, poof, gone. And it'll happen like that. It'll happen in a day. As soon as you hear uh, this bank went down, a too big to fail bank, and then every other bank will go down, two quadrillion in derivatives explode like that. We barely got by it in 2008. Barely. It's 2022. It's going to happen. Hang on to your hats. Want more information? Go to roadtoroot.com. Hit subscribe today. We are currently, as of today, giving away, well, today is. Uh, what is it? Tuesday the 4th, October 4th, 2022. We are giving away one silver Road to Ruta coin, double strike, with the heart, with every private road subscription. Get behind the scenes info, and it's the coolest coin ever made. And here's the process. You guys take care. <laughs>